happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we are going to finish the sea cat, I almost said sea kitty, <laughs> sea cat embroidery uh, design. And this is uh, from our ABC uh, Stitch Along, our ABC collection of uh, patterns. And uh, all we have left is the little letter C's that we're going to be doing as a satin stitch. Uh, so that is the plan for tonight. All right, let's get going. All righty, everyone. All right, I'm going to shimmy down here right away. Okay, so where we left off last night is we actually finished the kitty, uh, and we did the speech bubble and the little text inside, too, and the ball of yarn. I was not expecting to get all this text done last night, so that was kind of bonus and it was just with a scrap of thread as well oh there's no sound um does everyone else i mean well can't i don't know <laughs> you're not gonna know if uh you can hear me or not if if you can't hear me so anyway uh i'm gonna just see if anyone else says that there's no sound otherwise i'm gonna keep going it seems like there's sound on my end here Oh, Kimberly's not having issues. Teresa hears me. Okay. Oh, it interrupted? Oh, weird. Okay. That might be just a Facebook thing. Okay. Phew. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you never know. Never know with that stuff. Um, okay. So we have just these letter C's left, and I am going to go and, and um, satin stitch those in. So last time for the letter B, we just, uh, we just traced them. So here's, here's uh, our other letter. So we're going to do it like this letter A, where we fill the whole entire thing in uh, with satin stitches. And, um, you know, compared to the letter B here, we just outlined them, but we colored it in, which was kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, so that was quick and easy, fun way to do it. But I thought we'd, we'd do another uh, satin stitch deal here. So I would like to do it. Uh, how the original one is, where it looks like the satin stitch is kind of, the stitches are going in the direction, uh, like all the way around, like from a, from a center point, uh, versus just like all, you know, horizontal lines or all vertical lines or anything like that. So I do want to uh, have it go like kind of around in a circle. So to do that, I'm going to have to draw myself a bunch of guidelines, I think. Oh, Shirley can hear me in YouTube land. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, in YouTube. All right. <laughs> good so we're fine uh oh paula says that her phone was it was turned off on the phone <laughs> all right okay so i'm gonna draw lines in here just as guide points i could do those with stitches right away but i think just to um make it just like just for my own sanity, I'm going to draw them in first. I'm going to kind of imagine that I have like a center point right in the middle, and I'm going to just draw uh, from that center point. So I'm going to start with the easy one. Let's just go vertical first. I think I'll just kind of keep rotating, rotating this and kind of drawing in uh, my little lines here. So I, I'm literally imagining a dot in the middle and kind of going up. I might add a few more in here, but for now I'm just kind of making it a little easy by just kind of being vertical and horizontal. And All right, so I, I, I'm definitely going to add more, so let's just keep going. I think the, the more the better, especially since we're going around. Um, we have, They're like at such a curved, curved angle. The, more we get the easier it'll be to keep in check so the idea is that uh, i want to keep changing the angle as i stitch uh, i might have to do some shorter stitches just to fill in the gap but my thought is uh my stitches will be like just a hair further apart on the outer edge and then a hair closer together on the inner edge but overall um it'll have the effect of of being like filled in 
uh, all the way. It'll just be like, my thread will be like scrunched on one end and not as much on the other end. But I can always add like little halvesy bits in just to kind of fill it if I need to. Let's get kind of close to the end here. So uh, theoretically, I, I'll make this one straight. So I'm just going to kind of angle it in the middle. Yeah, this is kind of, maybe, maybe as I sh got towards these corners, I should have like gone less from the center here, but let's just try and equalize that out. Yeah, okay. So that's the one. Um, I'm wondering, should we see how this works with all these um, angles first before we go on to the small one? I kind of think so, just to see if this, this way works. Oh, Kimberly says, I'm not sure I understand w what you're doing and why. So uh, I want to fill this in with lines and I want the lines to go in this direction, in these directions. So, you know, I could do, let's see, just grabbing a notepad. So we could, I'm just going to kind of draw out our letter here a few times. That one's a little crazy looking. All right, so normally when I, I sat and stitch, I usually just pick an angle. Sometimes I just go vertical and I'll do all my stitches kind of vertical, right? Like if I was doing this satin stitch all vertical, I'd kind of come down here and then I'd come back up and my whole thing would be stitched vertical. You know, you can pick any angle. Like we could go kind of at a diagonal I would just be filling it in with stitches at one angle. And that's actually kind of what makes it super satiny uh, going the same direction. So maybe we should really do that. But uh, what I thought I'd do instead is, I'm gonna actually just draw it in kind of again here. What I thought I'd do instead is try and turn the stitches as I go. So they're, <laughs> I obviously can't draw this and talk at the same time, but so they're all kind of going around a center point. I think it'll just give it a, kind of a fun look. So I, I'm drawing guide lines basically, so I can kind of estimate the dis, like the, like the angle in between those angles by them being like really close to each other. Like this one, I'm, I think I need another one just as a guide there. So I'm just trying to like equalize it out in between the lines. So there, so I, I'm trying to get like that effect where it's all going around the center like that um, versus all, all one direction, which I think would actually look okay as well. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the plan. This is, this is probably the hardest uh, way to go for sure. Like without question, that's, this is the hardest way to do it. It would be much easier to just pick an angle and go uh, just that angle the whole time. Even if I did that though, like let's say I want to do vertical, I would still kind of put some guide posts in uh, with either drawing it beforehand with pencil or a water soluble marker or some stitches. I would put those in and then I'd kind of fill in the gaps. And that's so I don't, you know, so I don't accidentally start like angling it a little bit and then uh, you know before I know it and I look far away I'm like ah oh, crap I'm like I'm not vertical anymore I'm like at this weird angle and you know then I have to correct it and it doesn't look as pretty and perfect so um that's why I do like putting like some visual guide posts in first and then kind of filling the gaps in between it's just to avoid uh things getting crooked and and not as pretty and perfect anymore uh, so we are doing the hardest way to do it. You know, we could do it both ways. We could do this one, uh, like at all these angles and trying to do the angles. And then we could do another one just at, you know, vertical or something, um, just to see. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's try doing this one first. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So I've drawn all those lines in here just with pencil. Like literally all that's going to do is help me 
go from one to the next. And actually, I probably, normally I would do it with the stitches. I would just put like a stitch at each of those instead of drawing it first. But now since I drew it, I, I probably don't need to do those stitches. I can just start and go all the way around. Uh, but let's, let's get some thread. Let's take a breath and get some thread. Um, I'm going to get my 24 inches or so. I'm almost out of the celery here, but you know, maybe we will, maybe we won't use it again for a while either. So it might still last me a while in this whole collection here. So I'm still using three strands. So normally, like if you wanted to do super perfect satin stitch, you would just use a single strand and you'd go in all the same direction. That's what's gonna get it the like sheen nice look, but we're, we're gonna do three strands just cause it's gonna get done way sooner. And we're still gonna have like a pretty satin effect. It's just not gonna be like that perfect, perfect satin effect. We should do like an all satin stitch project sometime just to practice. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if that'd be fun or not, but I think we'd all be a little bit better by the time we're we're done with it. I suppose that's kind of what this this alphabet pattern is. Was a good uh, if you do the the satin stitch for every one of the letters, you'd have a whole lot of practice in. <laughs> all right, we got our three strands. So there is something. Uh, by separating the three strands, they do lay a little bit flatter. Uh, so that, that'll help our sand stitch, but I don't think we need to be so perfect either. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with an away knot, like how we've been doing this whole process, just cause I don't wanna like weave in the backs of these stitches and jump to here. I don't wanna have a knot on the back either. So I'm going to uh, just tie a knot here. I kind of am tempted though to just still stitch in these lines and then like come back the other way. I might do that still. All right, I'm gonna just put my thread in over here. So I think I'm going to stitch my, you always kind of want to go in the same direction, but you know, now we're going around in a circle, which is kind of goofy. So I'm going to start on the outer edge and always stitch towards the inner edge, I think. So I will always be on the outer edge stitching to the inner edge. So I am going to start right here. I'm going to go just outside my line, uh, cause I do want, um, I want to cover up my line. So I'm just going to be on the outer edge. So I'm going to get straight across. And I think I am going to actually go around and get all of these lines. Just on the outside of, of the line is where I'm stitching. So just on the outside and just on the outside again. I think I'm going to add one in between these two because that's a pretty big gap. I don't know if I'd be able to do that without, um, without a little guide post in there. So we're adding an extra one. So just in the center of the top and the center of the bottom. That's good. They look like little eyelashes. Gosh, now that I'm doing this sand stitch takes so long, I, I'm like, man, I hope we can get this done tonight yet. We got that whole other C to do, but um, we'll just take it as it goes. We still have uh, two days left this week. Um, I may start quilting this this week, so we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, when we're done stitching this or, or tomorrow, um, I'm still working on that quilt pattern measurements and stuff for you. So I'll have that very soon as well, but I can kind of give you an overview of what, what my sort of plan is once we get, get this guy done. So you can put as many or as a few lines, uh, like, um, 
little guidelines in here as you want. I am finding it helpful to put a whole pile of them in for for this change of the changing angle. So this is not really we're definitely like playing it a little loose with the satin stitch by changing angles and stuff like this, but I did it on the original one and I thought it was really pretty. It kind of going around in a circle. So we're just giving it a try again. Let's get back like this. So I'm going to go all the way to here and then I'm going to work my way backwards. And what, what, what we're going to try and do is fill in the gaps of each one of these. Uh, and we're going to just try and um, slightly change the angle as we go so we can fill this in really nicely. And if, if it ends up that I do have some gaps on the outer edge, uh, I can do some like half stitches to fill in those, those gaps a little bit. And, and I'll show you that if, if we need to. I think I'm going to kind of keep it upright. I think that's going to be easiest for me. So I'll probably be rotating a lot. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. We are just uh, I'm hoping to finish him up today. I'm going to be focusing on this satin stitch today. All right. So goal number one is I'm going to fill in this little gap. And you know what, I could just, you know what, I might just put one right in the middle. Maybe I'll just keep having these. So there I go, right in the middle. I think that is what I'm going to do. So right in the middle, and then I'm going to fill in the little gaps. I'm just going to draw a line right to the top there. Oh, that's great. And then fill in this gap. If it looks like it can hold two stitches in that gap, then I'll, then I'll put two. But this one, I think, is just one will work. There. So uh, uh, that's the start of our sand stitch. I think this is going to work just fine. So let's just let's split this in half again. So it might be thicker in some areas and, and uh, thinner, but I think, I think overall we're going to get the effect that we want. Sometimes it is easier for me to guide my needle up through that space just so I can get that second stitch in just the right spot. Here's a little gap here. Uh, this particular thread color, floss color, is pretty similar to the background color. I mean it's a different color but the value of it is pretty close. So um, if we leave a little bit of a gap, we're not going to see it very, very much. But hey, this is working out pretty swell. I think that's looking great so far. All right, so now this one I'm having, and I'm definitely going to need to put two in that space. This seems a little bit bigger. Yeah, so I'm just going to kind of just already estimate that I need to one, two, so you can see they're a little wider apart along the outer edge and a little closer together on the inner edge. And so this is kind of what I mean by like doing a little half stitch. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to try and go all the way, but I'm going to kind of I'm like maybe a couple threads before the end here because that's pretty dense already at the inner curve there. So I'm just going to go slightly shy of it and this stitch will kind of cover that up. So it's almost like we're doing, we're adding a little extra stitch in there. I don't want to do that too much because I think it's, you can kind of tell when it's happening, but sometimes when it's just getting too dense, uh, towards the inner side, then maybe I'll I'll add a little half one in every once in a while. All right, it's going. 
And take your time. This is this uh takes a while doing all these little precise satin stitches. All right, I'm going to do two stitches here again. So we will just chill here and do this one letter C tonight. <laughs> it's kind of nice though. We the rest of it went so quickly just with that little just back stitch and then we're done and uh, so this will be a nice contrast at the bottom here there we are quarter of the way done <laughs> all right let's split this one Okay, definitely two can fit in here. So just imagine doing this with one strand. Um, I would be doing a whole lot more splitting, splitting um, these little areas in half probably. Oh, it just is, looks so cute. It just is like raised up. You get that little shadow there from from the height of it. I think it's looking pretty cute. I'm going to put two in here again. Ooh, that one was a little short, so let's get this one a little longer. Maybe I can cover that one up a little. Yeah, good enough. Ooh, I started, uh, um, you know, I'm knitting that snake pattern, um, which is just so fun to knit again. I haven't, you know, I, I picked up knitting again to finish up uh, that sweater of my mom's that I've been working on, and uh, it just felt so good to knit again. It's been so long. So I started that snake toy pattern, and I started uh, stuffing it today too, because you, you kind of have to stuff it as you go. So I did the head first, and then you just keep doing the body. But you kind of you have to you have to finish the head. So you got to put all your eyes on and the tongue and however you want to have the head to look. Um, then uh, uh, then you have to stuff it right away. So I am stuffing it with my excess, just like. I have like tons from doing all of these embroidery kits and stuff. I have so many, I, I save it all. I have so much fabric like bits. So like, you know, the end uh, of, you know, if I cut a fold off and I have just like a tiny little, little threads from there or, you know, whatever my tiniest little shards of, of thread of um, fabric, those I am uh, using to stuff the, the snake and it's already just like heavy and nice and I just have the the head and a little bit of the neck I suppose a little bit of the body stuffed but I think it's gonna work really really great so ugh, slow motion recycling that too so I'm really happy about that I think I'm gonna have this again it looks like I can put three in here yeah so now I'm just going to have it again, and we will have enough. Ooh, and we are already going to be out of thread here soon. Isn't that crazy? This just sucks up the thread. Ooh, which one did I do just then? I kind of filled this gap too, but I'll put one extra stitch in there. And when you put um, a lot of stitches in, they'll they'll push on the stitches next to it next to it so that might fill the gap for you you might not have to put as many as you thought in there that's kind of what was happening there a little bit i think this one i'll just put two in yeah uh, this next gap is pretty 
large and the angle changes quite a bit so I'm gonna definitely put another guide in there but these are all looking really nice like I feel like they're all at the correct angle going around so uh, putting all these guide posts in definitely a hundred percent helped that's a good point Linda um, I think I Linda says uh, if I start the D right away I might get three done in this next two weeks what I think I might do though is start quilting it um, because ultimately I want to do this whole project quilt as you go so when we have moments of extra time like this ugh, I'm gonna have this again I don't know if I did that very good job at that one um, when we have moments like extra days and stuff I want to see if we can sneak in some quilting so I'll uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit here because otherwise we'll have like five or six of these racked up without any of them quilted yet and that is gonna take some time even if we we're doing it as we go all right I think this has got me my last stitch I'm just kind of stretching it here forgot that I only have a tiny bit left here decent all right let's weave in the end I might actually just leave this uh ooh, got some fuzzles in here I might leave the um ah, I got a whole pile of fuzzles here I'm gonna just snip them leave the way not till later because I'll have more stitches to to weave it into so I just trim those fuzzles and they are now part of this satin stitch on the back which is fine Okay, let's get a fresh piece here. And I have, I have this piece from earlier, but you know what? We did not separate this. And just because we are doing satin stitch, uh, I am gonna separate these, even though I already have the three, but separating them does help them lay a little flatter because together it still has like a little bit of that twist in. So, I'm just gonna separate them anyway and put them back together we did a test of that once and you could tell a little bit I mean I must be getting tired because I'm getting I'm getting picky getting picky that's when the perfectionism comes out when I get too too tired but eh. I think I wouldn't have bothered except for that I'm stitching in the same in the same design still like if I was just starting this one I probably wouldn't have bothered or somewhere else on here uh, but because I've only got half of this done and I wanted to start the second half I want to make sure that the thread is like the same so um, separated and put together versus like one separated and put together another just still twisted from being in the original six strands if that makes sense all right let's weave in the end I don't have to do an away knot with this one I could but I'd have to weave that in later so might as well just weave it in now Ooh, feels like I have a little what I have a little knot here I must have um that's not gonna work I'm gonna have to pull that out uh, I must have like twisted the thread around it's um, when I was weaving it in just then oh I guess it's not a knot that was curled around the other the other threads though and that wasn't gonna give us a nice flat satin stitch but it was fine it, it just was looped around the other piece so we're still good but those are too fuzzy to thread so I'm going to clean them up there we are now we have a nice nice end there there we are okay back at it just making sure that everything's in here fine still looks like we have some bloops there that's good 
All right, let's uh, go back to splitting. Uh, looks like this one. I think I could get this in two. Let's see if I can do this straight on. You did green toes yesterday. Something about a little colorful number nubbins you can put on the pet's claws. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about, Anne. <laughs> okay, so Anne is saying um, you did uh, you did the green toes yesterday. I think I remember seeing something about little colorful nubbins you can put on your pet's claws. So I'm like, what? But I know exactly what you're talking about, and I know what you're talking about because I follow, uh, I was saying this yesterday, I follow that uh, woman who, um, that woman who grooms cats for a living. She's a cat groomer, and so she had a, a cat that had, little fingernails so they're like little silicone or something or rubber or something but they're little they're okay for the cat um but you put it on your pet's claws and it, she did it because that cat or something the owner wanted it because that cat was um just like scratches a lot and the owner like is on blood thinners or something, or just like, you know, could not get scratched by the cat. Uh, but the cat is like a scratcher. So they put those, um, they put those on the cat and uh, they can still do everything theoretically that they want uh, with claws, but they just have those little nubbins on. And I think they just stay on. Like, oh, Teresa says, I've seen that wouldn't they be eaten by the cat if they fall off? Yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of where my brain's at, too. Like, wouldn't the cat just, like, figure out how to get those things off and and then puts around with them? But I don't know. The groomers seem to, like, the groomers are the, that they don't do that often or whatever, but, like, for this particular owner who needed them or whatever. But she didn't she didn't say anything about that, so I don't know. <laughs> But they came in different colors and stuff. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's funny. They are really cute, though. This does look kind of like that a little bit. Uh. Cats are so fun when they are groomed. They're just so funny. If I hadn't seen that TikTok, though, I would not have known what the heck you're talking about because <laughs> it's such a hard thing. Like, unless you've seen it before, it's like, what? You're putting what on cat's claws or whatever? So they're just like these, they're about this big and they just fit over the claws. It's just so kind of, it's like, it's cute. It's like they have um, a little nail polish on. But yeah, they're like little silicone or rubber covers or something. I don't know. Oh, thanks, Deborah. Deborah says, such a cute flock. I don't think t Chad would tolerate having those on his nails. I wonder if it's the equivalent to like when people put like booties on on their dog and the dogs like don't know how to touch the ground anymore <laughs> oh Gina says I think they eventually grow off and need to be replaced yeah that could be like she was replacing she had a the groomer had to replace the ones that were on so yeah maybe they oh actually I think she when she trimmed the nails she trimmed those at the same time and then they then they were able to be taking off the rest of the way so they must be on pretty good because she just trimmed them when she trimmed the nails and then had to like cut the rest of them off a little bit i wonder if it's kind of like um you know what you dip or what one would dip like wrench handles and stuff in players handles kind of more of like a i don't know whatever that is 
All right, I'm cutting this one in half here. Oh, Paula says they are called soft paws or soft claws. Oh, they come with an, an adhesive. Oh, that makes sense. And uh, oh, and in a pack of 40, sheesh. Yeah, so it's probably got some extreme glue. But yeah, so yeah, the groomer like clipped the nail and then was able to like cut the rest of it off or something. And it was like a white fluffy kitty and with his little pretty pink nails, it was cute. <laughs> Catherine says, I can't imagine trying to trim my cat's nails. I know, that seems totally insane. Uh, but, th I mean, that's one of the things, like, this groomer is like, you know, start them when they're younger, because then they can get used to coming and taking a, you know, being in the bathtub and hearing the, the loud the loud fan or the blow dryer or whatever and the nail clipping and so she puts um if they she you know gets to know the cats that come in but if um there's if they're cranky or they don't like a certain thing or whatever you know she she either goes really quick or you know does other things first or whatever but uh she also has like a a ball that she can put around their head that has an opening on the other end so they can still see everything and move around and all that. But that helps. But how would that help, like, from getting clawed? Like, they're, they're still wiggly. <laughs> uh, so I think sometimes if she does it in her lap, then, then they're a little friendlier sometimes. And each cat is different. It's, I don't know. I'm completely fascinated with this cat grooming person. <laughs> yeah, Teresa says, I have enough trouble being consistent with my own na nails, lol. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they are kind of cute, though. Um, those little cat things. But yeah, I don't know. I'd feel kind of weird putting it on a cat. But if if it was necessary, then it, then it was necessary, I guess. Our cats, or not our cats, but like Chad and most of our cats were outdoor cats and not like city outdoor cats like they're not they're not deleting a species of bird or anything like that they're just like wild animals basically um but yeah i'm they need their claws i'm thinking well and they'd still have them with with those colored things on but they're blunted i suppose Probably like having mittens on, <laughs> fumbling around, trying to claw stuff, but I got my big mittens all over my claws. All right, this is working great. I think this is looking really good. I haven't had to like fill in extra stitches hardly at all and I think like the angles are looking awesome like it looks really 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 good um, so I'm, I'm really happy with this and it really is just putting all of these lines in these guidelines and then just keeping on splitting them really so I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the smaller letter C this is just working out better than I thought I'm taking it slow and just I'm really paying close attention on where I'm coming up and down just so I'm just on the outside of the line. But I think it's looking nice. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, they're not, those cat covers are definitely not for looks. I don't think it, like, like I said, the, the woman or the cat, the owner of that particular cat in the video, um, like was on blood thinners or something and, and it had a cat that you know cats are all different and this cat happened to like scratching a lot and uh so couldn't have claws get the skin all right two more stitches i think and then this feller is done so we'll weave in the ends I think it looked really nice. I don't see, I'm just looking around the outside. 
I don't see really any gaps, really. This worked out just fine. I'm loving it. All right, and I just, oh man, look at this. I've gotten more fuzzles. I, I need to pay closer attention. I should just trim the edges a little bit, maybe. That's stuck in there forever, too. Oh, well. <laughs> While I'm at it, let's just get some of these other ones. I mean, if I keep pulling on them, they'll get longer and they'll be more, but still, maybe this will help a little. All this will be cut off later, so I'm not worried about having a rough edge here. Ooh, do I have a knot on here? Yeah, what the heck? There we go. A little thread left here. I think I'll probably start fresh, um, but we might use that for something else at some point. Different letter. There, I just cut away that away knot. And thread this end. It's hard to do. I can't see past my nails now. There we are. And then weave in this feller. One, two. Oh, I'm losing it. Stay with me. There. Two. So there's our first letter C, not too shabby. Definitely took took time. So um, we might act, not actually get this completely done tonight, which is fine. Uh, we'll just uh, finish it up tomorrow because I want to I wanna just draw all these all in with pencil again. That worked out really well, I think. So I'm just kind of thinking of that like center point again. And actually now I might just split these in half a little bit there because this is quite an angle shift here now I'm just kind of having each of them that worked really well last time so I'm gonna do it again Probably didn't need to draw all these in, but eh, I think it's helpful. There we are. Okay. Um, I'll get another piece of thread here. Ooh, got a little spare piece here. Well, let's just use this. Does this have three? Yeah. So I am gonna let's just do that extra little splitting of it. Uh, this is not gonna be enough, I don't think, but it'll be something. And I am going to do the away knot again to start, just so we can um, not have any jumps. So uh, maybe I'll talk about this quilt a little bit now uh, before getting started on this, though. So uh, uh, let me just grab, for example, one of our other pieces. So what I've done. And what I'm going to be doing for this whole process is the quilt as you go process. So what that means is I'm going to take our finished squares and quilt them each individually instead of having a whole quilt done, like a quilt top done first. So uh, we're basically going to make like 26. Uh, and if you include the, the four corners that I'm going to do, I'll have to quilt those as well. So theoretically 30 tiny little quilts that are this size that we will sew together using the quilt as you go method, which will have 
um, we'll be holding them together with sashing pieces, basically, and then a little binding piece on the back. So I have already cut myself um, a pile of 10 inch squares. This is actually, I think they ended up more like 11 inch squares, but 10 inch squares of batting. So I need 30 of these for my 30 squares, uh, the 26 for the letters and then the four corners. Uh, so 30 squares. And then I will also need like a 10 inch piece for the back. So what I need to do before tomorrow is choose what I wanna use as my back fabric. And I could use all one color if I wanted. I'd still have to cut it up into the squares. Uh, or I could use like a pile of different colors. I think I may do that. I'm going to see what I have. Um, I, I had a ABC collection or just, no, I think, um, oh, I did have that. I should look. Well, anyway, I have an ABC collection of fabric, but I have some other like cute fabric as well from old penguin and fish collections when I was designing fabric. So I might break some of that out. Uh, so maybe I'll cut up a whole like patchwork of them. Uh, so the back is all different, whatever. I'll have to pay attention to that, but um, I'll do that for tomorrow because what we're going to do is take uh, a back piece uh, that I don't, don't have cut yet. And then our batting piece and then our front piece. Um, I'll have to press this and everything first. Uh, but then we're going to just quilt. I'll pin this together and we're going to quilt just this piece. So, you know, we can get as fancy as we want. We'll free motion quilt um, on the sewing machine. Oh, we could hand stitch some too if we wanted. But we'll make like a pile of tiny little finished quilted pieces. Ultimately, I'm going to cut them down to eight and a half inches. So I just have extra just to make it easier to uh, do the quilting. And if, if our fabric comes in a little bit then uh, from the quilting, then we'll have extra. That's, that's what I'm worried about. I want to make sure that I have that extra on the edge. So these are about 10, 10 and a half inch squares to start out with. We'll be trimming like a good inch off of all the sides. So I will end up with eight and a half inch squares. When they're sewn into the quilt, they will be eight inch squares. So if you measured the finished quilt, they would be eight inch but because of the seam allowance, we're going to cut them to eight and a half inch after we quilt it. So that's why we need the extra. Um, that's why I'm not like cutting these all to eight and a half inches right away. I'm cutting them bigger so I can quilt them and then we'll trim later if that makes sense. So I will have more instructions on this and we'll be doing the whole process uh, during the year here. Um, so we'll be we'll be going through it all in detail but what i need for tomorrow if i want to quilt some of this is um some back pieces cut up uh that are about 10 inches or so can i buy the muslin i messed up on oh yes absolutely uh we have um the muslin that's in our shop um if you just type in muslin or fabric or, or go to the supplies area of the shop uh i'm sure it's in there we have them by by the piece and it's it's this same kind um although we do switch up muslin every once in a while so hopefully it's the same kind that you have uh catherine um i may have a piece or two of the other kind potentially still too but um this is the kind that has it has a little bit more flex in that's what i have now um all right, so that's that's kind of the plan. So I'm going to do that with every single one of these blocks eventually, or letters eventually, and uh, um, we'll continue the quilt as you go. So I'm thinking we could start that, uh, at least prepping. We could prep the three that we have done. Well, you know, once we have this done, there'll be three done. Um, but we could prep those tomorrow after we're done with this satin stitch, because I don't think we're going to finish this satin stitch tonight. Um, so, yeah, I think we could like even finish quilting one. So we'll, we'll assemble the three that we have, cause why not? Uh, and then I can have the machine out and we could free motion quilt one of these guys right away. I would love to do that. Um, all right, let's do our little away not over here again. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do the exact same way that I did before. I'm going to just um, start on the outside, go to the inside. 
and I'm going to go just on each one of these spokes to start off with all the way around and then we'll come back the other way and fill in all the gaps again. That's the part I think we'll get most of it done tomorrow. So depending on how long this letter C takes tomorrow, um, we'll see how far we get with the quilting. For sure, I think we, we can assemble, we can prep our pieces. Maybe we'll just do that, prep our pieces, because then I can cut some fabric for the back and um, prep our pieces to quilt. And then tomorrow we can for sure, or not tomorrow, Friday, we can for sure quilt one of these. We might even be able to quilt a couple of them. They're just so little. It's going to be so fun and easy to quilt. And you'll, you'll like have opportunity to play around too because, because it is such a small piece. You're not dealing with a whole gigongous quilt. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's much easier to handle, which means that you can play around a whole lot more. So this might be a good project to practice some, some quilting. I feel like every time I quilt, it's practice. <laughs> Always practicing. So if I was doing like just vertical stripes or something, or not stripes, but vertical satin stitching, I wouldn't have put in nearly as many of these spokes as what I am here but it is just because the angles shift so much and I want them to be like pretty and consistent and all that. That's why I'm kind of going overboard with how many of these I'm putting in. I think it worked really nicely for the big letter here. Two more, and then we can work our way back around. I don't know why I keep rotating it. I could just stay in one spot. Ooh, I kind of went on the inside of some of these lines. Eh, that's not what I wanted to do, but hopefully it'll look fine. Maybe I should have stayed looking straight up. Ah, well. All right, let's do a couple of these. I'm going to just have this. And then I think I can get in one on each side. start. We'll just get two in right here, so I'm not going to have it. Could have maybe fit three, but I think, uh, so I put two in when I could have probably put three, but if I crowd the next one, then it might push, push this last stitch over a little bit. Oh, actually, it looks, it looks fine. Um, gosh, I almost think I can well, let's have it and then see what I got. Um, and did I go here already? No. <laughs> Eyes are pay playing tricks on me, I think. Hey, we might get pretty far on this actually tonight yet. We got five minutes that I can get some of this done yet. I am putting two here. It just feels like it needs it. Squish another stitch in there. There we are. Go 
is looking okay. It's funny. I, I do a stitch and then I look up at, at comments and then I'm like, oh, I go back and I'm like, wait, where was that gap that I left just now? Which is, I suppose, good because if I can't see the gaps, then I think we've filled it in pretty de decently. Just trying to like poof it up a little bit here. Some looked low and some looked high. Oh, there, that, that, that helped a little bit, I think. Squeeze into here again. All right, I think I'm going to fill this gap right here and then the one next to it here. And I think I'm going to call it a night there. I feel like my eyes are going buggy. <laughs> Best to start this up again tomorrow, I think. All right, so, and actually, let's, I'm going to throw the needle minder on here so I can flop the needle on there so that doesn't get away from me tonight. I don't have a lot of thread left on here. There we are. So, uh, we got just around the bend down there, and we have all of our lines ready to go tomorrow, so I think this should go pretty quickly. Uh, it's looking good though. I'm liking it. It's just fun to touch it. It does it have like a raised feel to it. It's just really fun. So, all right, everyone. So thank you again for joining me. Uh, here we are so far. Ah, almost done. I still really like the colors that we chose for this, um, uh, for, um, you know, this little kitty. So I'm thinking, you know, my plan originally was I'm going to do them exactly how the original patterns were and, and all that, but we've changed like every single one so far, I think. We did the first one uh, to the instructions and then we just full on stopped after that. So that's perfect. Um, I'm more than happy to play around with these a little bit more uh, this time around. You know, we could even do some thread painting or something else would be, would be fun as well. So awesome, you guys. Thank you again. And I will be back here tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll talk more about the quilting of this and, uh, yeah, prep some of that as well. So have a lovely evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.